Hi, it's Dave Helmley with Adobe, and we're going to share with you today some new features in Premiere Pro CC in our October 15th release, or what a lot of people refer to as our 7.1 update. So again, coming out in October. So what you're going to see is we wanted to give you a sneak peek at some of the work that we've been doing with some new camera formats, uh, just some new updates to the UI, and really important today, I wanted to talk about how some of that works on OpenCL. So we get a lot of questions all the time on what my GPU is actually doing, what things is it controlling on the screen. So we thought we'd give you a good idea what that looks like. And to tell you a little bit about my setup, because I have a lot of people always wanting to know what hardware I'm running, I'm actually running a brand new Dell 4K display. It's pretty exciting. Dell's one of the first companies uh, to come out with a 4K display from the uh, computer manufacturers, and I'm really excited about it. I've been playing around with it a bit, and it's very sharp. This is actually all connected to a dual processor Dell T7600, another great computer. So let's take a look and see what Premiere Pro uh, updates we have and how it relates in this particular segment on some of the OpenCL advancements that we have. So one of the first things I like to talk about is just the UI. There's a lot of things going on in OpenCL, and it really pays off to have a, a great graphics card. Uh, so we're actually working on FirePro technology today, and what's, uh, what type of advantages you'll see, let's take a look at something like a multicam. So as I'm working with my multicam, a lot of the windows that are having to update here are actually being controlled by OpenCL. You need that graphics pipeline to actually play back, in this case, all five layers of video. And don't forget, this is also being fed out of my other monitor here. So OpenCL, that card is controlling both of those. And I'll go to the next sequence. Turn multicam off. So in this particular example, let's go take a look how OpenCL is helping me with a brand new feature where we are able to turn on overlays on top of the program monitor. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to go turn overlays on. And what you'll notice here is I've got all my audio and video tracks showing up, but we actually have a UI that controls that. So let's go back over here, go to overlay settings, and show you what OpenCL is controlling. So we can come over here and I'm going to go ahead and maybe turn on a sequence clip name. I can come down here and turn on something like uh, time code. And maybe over here I want to go ahead and have a clip name. And when I click OK, you're going to see I have all this information being displayed uh, directly in the window. And again, you can turn the things on and off that are pertinent to your video. You also have the choice of whether or not when you play back video, if I hit the playback button here, whether or not those turn off or on during playback. I can keep them on during playback, all of that being controlled by OpenCL. One of the brand new camera formats that we support in this release is Cinema D and G. And what you'll notice here is I have lots of layers being played back. All the scrubbing that's happening here, as well as the playback, is being controlled by OpenCL. I'm at uh, full playback mode, and the reason this is important is this is the first time that we've ever had the opportunity to use a camera codec like, like a Cinema D&G to be fed through a GPU uh, pipeline. And again, in this case, it's OpenCL. So there's a lot of people that are very excited about us finally using the graphics card and the power of the, uh, the chip, in this case, the, the FirePro W7000, uh, being able to pipe this through. And you can see it is very fluid. Uh, the Blackmagic users that use this format are extremely excited about this. And remember, anything that I do to this Blackmagic clip as well, some effects will all be, uh, again, put through that pipeline. Another format that we support uh, that uh, is pretty phenomenal is uh, not only RED 4K, and as you see here, I can play back RED 4K uh, on a 4K monitor like this Dell, or I can, of course, work with it here, but actually what you're seeing here is not RED 4K, it's RED 6K. And just look how fluid this actually plays back. So if I come over here and I hit, I hit the space bar, you're gonna notice it's very, very fluid. Uh, same uh, red rules apply, by the way. You'll notice this is a quarter resolution here. Uh, if you happen to have a Red Rocket, uh, you can play back uh, up to 4K, or a Red Rocket X, you can play back up to 6K. And the reason this is important 
is because if you have a technology like a rocket in there and you have your fire pro in there, the effects and titles and things that you lay on top of that will actually split into a parallel workflow. Let the Fire Pro GL handle the things that it needs to handle, maybe a three-way color corrector, titles, things like that, and let the Red Rocket handle all the playback of the R3D file. Two great technologies working side by side. So another great feature that we've always had in Red, and of course works in this mode as well, is direct from the timeline now, I can go up to Red Source Settings, and be able to control all the different things that I might want to control for this image. So in this particular case, I might want to change the color space and a working color space to Rec 709. You sort of see the warm temperatures sort of came up there a bit. Uh, I can oversaturate that just a little bit and maybe turn on the heat, maybe make that a little bit more red there, uh, make it match my uh, Fire Pro logo. And I'll go ahead and close this down. And the first thing you'll notice is that UI is being updated right here, again being controlled by uh, that, pi that OpenCL pipeline. And when I play this back, you'll see it's just playing right back just as you would uh, expect it to. So just great manipulation of the file, great to be able to get to that from a timeline, and even better to have the UI updating uh, appropriately. So let's uh, jump out of here and we'll jump into uh, another project that we have which shows uh, a really cool uh, new feature that we have called Direct Link. So what you see here is we've got multiple layers on top of this image here. And what I might want to do is go ahead and uh, directly uh, manipulate this. So I'm just going to come over here and bring this scale down. And go ahead and move this image right in the corner. All this that you see happening here, being able to move this image around, is actually all going through the GPU pipeline. Now from here, I might want to take this and do what I've never been able to do before and get that over to speed grade instantaneously. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, select a command called direct uh, length to speed grade. It's going to ask me to save uh, my Premiere Pro project. Speed grade is going to open up. And what you're going to see for the first time is you're going to actually see uh, my timeline update with exactly what I see inside Premiere Pro. So I've got my layers exposed. This is the Premiere Pro timeline. I didn't have to wait for any rendering, any processing. It just came directly over here. Things that I want to point out for this is this is all being controlled in this particular direct link mode through the GPU and in particular OpenCL. So it's really important to notice uh, what's going on there. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and click on a, a, a layer. And let's go ahead, you see the change there, so obvious change there. Let's go ahead and click the Premiere Pro button right here, and that'll actually take me back to Premiere Pro. I'm going to go ahead and save, the, uh, save this project. And I'm back inside Premiere Pro. Give the media a chance to, uh, to load. And you see all the changes right there. I can actually come back and, uh, and play this. Now, what's actually happening here in this particular mode, you'll notice that it went ahead and added a Lumetri effect right here. That Lumetri effect is being controlled by the GPU. So it's another benefit to have uh, a nice GPU card is being able to watch the speed grade uh, edit in this case, play back in real time. So just another great benefit. Now let's go ahead and close this down and I'll, I'll uh, end with a really cool feature that a lot of people have been waiting for. And it's a feature that we have uh, that uh, people want to be able to protect their work. In this case, it's a feature for watermarking. So I've got my project here. I could go ahead and scrub through that and decide I need to send this out over the web. Maybe I've got to send it out for, for review. And I want to go ahead and export this out without having to add a graphic. I want to be able to add the graphic right here. I'm going to go ahead to my image overlay. And I'll go ahead and grab an image from my desktop. So I'm going to go ahead and bring the opacity down. 
update the screen there. And you see I've got my, my graphic here. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and add uh, some more information to that. I'm going to go ahead and put the name of the uh, watermark up there. That could be my company name. And let's go ahead and add some time code. So you have full control over what's happening here. I've got my time code, my watermark. I can reposition those as I need to. My FirePro uh, graphic there with the opacity down. Now the reason I like to show this, not only is it an exciting new feature that we have inside of the latest uh, update, the October update for Premiere, but it's all being controlled on export through the GPU and again OpenCL. So this rendering, this additional processing that has to happen, a lot more math there has to go through the GPU to have real-time acceleration. So a great feature, a lot of people are going to make use for this, and for a lot of people, this one feature alone will justify the cost uh, of a decent graphics card like the W7000 that I'm using here today. So we'll go ahead and look at one more feature that's really slick. I'm going to go ahead and turn off this image. Let's turn off the name overlay and the time code. And let's say you wanted to apply uh, a look to this. I can actually click here and go ahead and apply maybe my uh, day for night, which will sort of turn this back into nighttime. All that's being controlled by the GPU and again, OpenCL. So having that direct access to the Lumetri looks that you might just want to do on export. I don't have to do it in Premiere or SpeedGrade. I might have these already available to Maybe somebody emailed them to me. They got them from Lightroom or another program like DaVinci or any of those products. You can use all of those in here and be able to have a consistent workflow right at the time you export. And again, the most important feature to, uh, to point out is the Lumetri effect is being uh, run through the GPU pipeline. By having a great GPU in here, we're getting that pipeline coming right through uh, the AMD Fire Pro. So again, these types of graphics being uh, able to update uh, anything in the project bin, all the new overlays that are inside the program monitor, you can see there's a lot going on in uh, OpenCL and GPU in particular and the October release. This is Dave Helmley with Dave Tech Table. Thanks for watching.